All right. Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We are on the last of the series called Leading Leaders. Um, I'm super excited about because, um, yeah, I feel like leading leaders is just something you can't fake. Um, it has to be authentic. So this is what I came up with. Leaders see right through inconsistencies, insecurities, and inauthenticity inauthenticity sorry <laughs> so consistency is your skill um, your security is like your heart or your identity and your authenticity is like your character so we're gonna kind of go through those real quick so the first one being consistency we've talked a lot about that over the past couple of weeks of like having a morning routine we've talked about being goal focused and goal driven we talked about your daily action, you know, whether it's 333 or whatever your daily action plan is. There's a lot of um, great content out there for that. And then I think a big thing with consistency is being able to prep for the next day. Um, I've kind of found this true with sending my kids to school. So I've gone from homeschooling to now sending them to school. And it really does require prep the night before to be able to have the lunches made and bed on time and whatever. But if we apply that to our business, and we're showing up consistently, it does take prep the night before or the day before to be able to show up fully the next day so that you're not constantly paying, playing catch up. So I would just encourage you to write those out. Like what's your morning routine? Are you gonna have affirmations? Are you gonna wake up and have coffee? Like what, I know I like to get up and get nitro in me and go for a workout because that's the only way that I'm gonna get out of bed and then I do my morning routine after that. But whatever works for you, like what's going to get you started on the best foot um, for, for that day. And then um, writing out your goals, super important. Um, a lot of times we can reach our goals and then we need to up level and just rewrite them and rewrite, rewrite our why. Our why can evolve into um, the next stage and next season of our life. But you've got to be really consistent with being able to fall back on that why and choosing to work instead of go play with your kids or whatever. You know I'm all about playing with my kids and showing up um, and present, being present in the time blocks that I have. So I use uh, a calendar app. I use Google Calendars. I've kind of gone through a lot of them. Google Calendars is my favorite because I can color code, but I can time block um, when I'm going to do my isogenics work, when I'm going to just honestly have to like schedule in this is when I'm playing with my kids because <laughs> if I for me if I don't schedule that in it gets eaten up with other things that need to get done we'll go be productive together rather than playing a game together and I've just learned my kids are much better behaved and I can show up way more present without the mom guilt if I'm going to show up and and play with them and be consistent with that and then when I have work time I don't have mom guilt I'm thinking, no, I, I fulfilled my mom duties here. I'm going to show up present here because, and then I'm going to have my rat, my why like written on my wall. All right. So that's kind of like speaking to consistency. The second one is I wrote security comes from identity or your heart. So who are you? Um, we can have identity statements. Um, who are you as a mom? Who are you as a wife? Who are you called to be and show up and invest in people? Um, you can have identity statements for each of those things. So I would really encourage you with your homework to write out some identity statements and what that would look like for you. Um, okay, so what's your place in the world? What's your purpose? Um, all of this come back, comes back to being able to lead leaders because if you're not going to be a leader yourself and those leaders are going to show up and they're going to kind of sniff out those insecurities, um, it, you've got to be able to show up congruent everywhere but we'll get to that point in a minute all right so what's your purpose and then how do you want to show up so like for me i always want to be giving i always want to show up in a way of um and i know that this is kind of standard with isogenics is like um yeah how can you serve other people how can you just can be a connector for them but i love to show up and like how what can i give them whether it's something tangible whether i can pray for them, whether I can encourage them, whether I can connect them with another person. I love just, yeah, just whatever it is to be able to give to them. I want to be showing up in that way in, in every 
yeah, dynamic. Every sphere that I show up in, I want to, instead of coming from this depleted place, I want to come from a place of like, I'm secure. I know who I am. I know what my purpose is. And I'm, I'm here to give you something. I'm not looking to get something from you because people really feel that. Okay, so the third one is authenticity is your character. Um, and this just comes through proving who you say you are. It comes through time for sure. Um, if there's anything incongruent, I would say find out where the root is. And you know I'm big on figuring out like the root cause to things. Um, not just nutritionally or physically, but also emotionally. And emotionally has a lot to do with how we show up as a leader um, and how we can show up consistently. We talked about that a lot last week. Um, so you can kind of go back and watch that video if you want to. But like an example would be, when was the first time I felt insignificant? If you're showing up in a place and you're like, oh, I just feel so insignificant with all these other leaders around me, if you're going to be a leader that attracts other leaders, what is that barrier that you're coming up against? Is there like, so for the example of um, like insignificance, if you're kind of coming up some kind of lie of insig insignificance, then ask yourself, when was the first time I felt insignificant? Like how did this have any kind of root in place in my life? And how has that played out in my life? And then replace it with truth. So obviously those are lies. You know, those are lies up here but you believe them to be truth down here. So being able to find out the root of the cause is a big part of being able to show up 100%. I was just talking to Meredith about this. It, if I show up 99%, like um, in, in my heart, in my belief, in my why, whatever it is, if, if 99% is there and the 100% isn't there, it's like you need that 1% to be able to show up consistently and secure and authentically all of those things you've got to have that one percent so figure out what it is that's blocking you and keeping you from um yeah leveling up and showing up with that last one percent okay so just that was just an example but figure out um because i had wrote when was the first time i felt insignificant write out a lie that you could be believing about yourself something that could be keeping you from showing up um, in that place of wanting to give to leaders. If you're coming to leaders and you're feeling like, who am I to talk to them? Figure out what it is that's keeping you from being able to show up authentically. Okay, so I wrote down, show up in humility and clarity, always giving encouragement. All right, so who are you gonna lead? So this is kind of like, I wrote out three categories of people that we're gonna be leading and um drawn to or who we're who we are trying to attract i wrote down new leaders new friends and new connections so new leaders are like um your up and coming potential people that are like hey yeah i definitely can understand this compensation plan and i can see how it aligns in my life um, tell me what to do i'm coachable like i want i want all in so those are like your new leaders your new friends are obviously just your connections, people that you've made. I guess I shouldn't say connections because the third one I said new connections, but your friends are just authentically just your friends hanging out. Um, you're showing up congruent in every sphere. And then your new connections are um, people that uh, Susan, is it Susan Miller? Man, I always forget her name. But who's the lady that talks about drive the line? So if you show up and is it Susan Miller? Okay. So you show up and let's say you've personally enrolled um, two or three people and you're helping them enroll their two or three people. Well, as you're working with those two or three people, you put them on the phone with two or three more people. So obviously we talk about, it's not about who you know, but it's about who they know. And Susan Miller talks about working, driving the line and not just working with your personally enrolled and helping them get two or three people and like move on to new people, but like keep driving the line, keep following it down. So those new people that you just helped enroll, your two PE, you wanna speak with them directly and cast the vision and work with them directly because who enrolled them is brand new. They don't know anything. They're not gonna be able to lead them the way you're gonna be able to lead them. So you directly work with them cast the vision, um, have the three-way calls with the next people, your three PE, and then you just keep driving the line. 
Now in that you're coaching the, your one PE, you're coaching them on how to do it. So you're modeling it for them. And then you're working directly with your two PE and your three PE, but you're not just bypassing your one PE. You're actually setting up your one PE to be able to understand what you're doing, cast the vision, all of that, to be able to go do that with other people down the road. So the first time, their first enrollments, two, three PE, keep going. Um, and as you're driving the line, you just, you don't want to forget about modeling that for your one PE. Don't do it for them because as you, um, show up as a leader, they're going to duplicate as how you show up, right? So I'm realizing that I'm talking with my hands a lot. It's really funny. <laughs> All right. So um, who are we going to lead? The first one is new leaders. So with new leaders, we want to be really good about giving them vision. So casting vision for them and telling them how this can be the answer to their biggest problems. So um, a little bit of homework. I would say create some of your core messages. So I'm gonna give you an example of what I mean. So for me, my core messages are um, things that I can talk about like at a drop of a hat. I can be passionate and excited about the top three or five things um, within Isogenics, whether it's business or products, um, that I can just, I can like, I can just rattle off because I'm so excited about it. So for me, products as a lifestyle, for sure. Um, residual income as an investment. And then pairing, macro tracking, and exercising. So those are like my three um, core messages that I want to be able to communicate to people. So you've got to come up with your three core messages. And then come up with your verbiage of um, how you would talk to that avatar. So that person in that you know, specific core message have some kind of um, script, you know, so that you have a starting point. I'm not saying you read the script to them. I'm just saying in your brain, then you've already thought about it because if you're attracting those people of products as a lifestyle, you need to be able to teach them and coach them on how to use your products as a lifestyle. And as they come to you and say, hey, I see that this is a big part of your life. Tell me why you love this. And then you'll be prepared. You won't just word vomit all over them. <laughs> you'll be prepared with your core message of what to be able to tell them. Okay, so those are like your new leaders. And then um, the second one, I put your new friends. So obviously they just, everybody needs encouragement. Everybody needs encouragement to be able to be who they were called to be. They can't get there without somebody else casting vision or leveling up or some kind of coach or somebody that's cheering them on. So we want to show up and be that kind of person for them. So um, I put be their friend, build them up, and look for ways to serve them all the time. Now, this is a big part of where um, leaders can sniff out in, like the inauthentic, inauthentic, oh, good grief, <laughs> authenticity. You can't fake this. It's not something that just you're going to force and they're going to feel it. It'll feel forced. So you really have to be authentic with how you're showing up and serving them and loving them really well. I remember um, Meredith, before I even got started with Isogenics at all, I remember she was over all the time. She helped me um, put together my couch. Um, I, and I know our, our kids would hang out and all of that, but I remember sitting on the couch one time and I'm like, Meredith is like, in all of these memories <laughs> because she just showed up literally wanting to like serve. She's like, well, my kids are at school. I can help you with yours. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> she literally came to serve. And so by the, by the time I was ready to look into nutrition um, and then years later, ready to look into any kind of residual income, obviously I was going to come to Meredith because I genuinely love her and want to support her. For no other reason did I start Isogenics because of that, or other than that, that came out funny. All right, the third thing, new connections. So with your new connections, remember that's the people that you're driving the line with, um, you wanna come with humility and clear intentions. So this is where you wanna kinda up level and treat this like a business, and not like haphazardly like, oh, if you want to, like treat, you have to have your business verbiage on. And this is when you wanna show up with your hair done and you know, I'm, I'm just saying like, you need to level up, figure out how to treat this as a business and to show up with the verbiage as treating it as a business. So I wrote out a couple of things, I'll read them to you 
and then I will post them. So don't feel like you have to like hurry and write through. Um, I'll just post them in the comments of the video. So um, this is for maybe 2PE, 3, 3PE and below. I wrote, I saw you were introduced to Isogenics by, you know, blank. I'm just reaching out to make sure you knew you can make a residual income from the products you're already buying. Are you open to hearing more about how we do that in the pockets of our time? And then obviously wait for them to respond. <laughs> and then I wrote, Isogenix has made over $7 billion in cumulative sales from a referral-based market, meaning you've introduced someone to Isogenix, meaning when you've introduced someone to Isogenix, the company thanks you with cash. But the best thing about residual income is you cast the vision once for how the Isogenics nutrition could fit into their life and you get paid on that one-time referral every single week. So I like this comparing it to like Airbnb um, or, you know, an Uber drive, like, hey, how would you like to get paid on that one time you did that work one time? How would you like to get paid on that forever? That's what residual income is. Because sometimes people are just um, programmed ahead of time to be like, scam, no, that's, but you have to put it in the verbiage that they're going to understand and meet them where they're at. So figure out your verbiage with that. But then I would ask them questions and I would say, how much money would you need to make for this investment to be worth your time? And don't just hear it and like, let it go out through the door, write it down. And then number two, I would ask, what would that kind of money do for you and your stage of life? Um, and ask that authentically. You can't just ask it like a script because that one's um, really touchy. <laughs> You've gotta really show up at like, and let them see your heart with it. So um, the next part I put, I work with people like yourself, so I wouldn't say people, I would say if it's a stay-at-home mom you're talking to, you can say, I work with stay-at-home moms like yourself who are ready for a change. What I'm gonna do is explain how our compensation plan works and how it specifically can work for you. But please know, I don't want you to feel targeted or pressured in any way. This business is all about timing. So if and when you're ready, you'll know your options and have of having a second stream of income. So I love that because before you're even going into sharing the details of the comp plan that could sometimes kind of do this, you're just debunking some of the skepticism ahead of time and telling them like, hey, I'm, I'm just here to present this option to you. And if it works for you, awesome. If it doesn't, that doesn't have anything to do with our friendship. I've said those words too. Okay, so at the very end, I put leading leaders is all about consistency, security, authenticity, casting vision, giving encouragement, and coming with humility and clear intentions. So that's the portion that I have today for um, leading leaders. And if you want to, you can keep recording it. You can totally ask questions. I do have kind of another tidbit, um, just because we're all women here. I was just kind of telling Meredith about it on um, a, a Zoom or a Voxer. I almost said Zoom. On a Voxer call, we were talking about, um, I don't know how to say it, the words of like living in harmony with our cycle, our 29 day cycle, and how we can show up within our 30 day cycle and what all of that means. So you, Meredith, you can tell me if you want to record that or not, or let that be a part of like the, okay, she says, go for it. All right. So I don't quite have all the verbiage for this yet. And I need to figure out where it is on my page, but it was really interesting because, you know, as women, um, the biggest lie that we can get a hold of is, is like trying to be all things all the time. <laughs> we feel like we have to be it all, all the time. I know I have to, I feel like that sometimes and it's just been something that I've been having to get through, um, for a while. But what I've realized is, um, I, I can have a balanced way to show up per week, but I've never thought of showing up and like balancing my time per month based on my cycle. Now, if I, I, I know about like basing my workouts off my cycle. I've learned about that, but I've never learned about like um, showing up in a workspace based on my cycle. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so hang on. I'm going to just try to find it right in here. It was in here just a second ago. Um, all right, so I wrote working within harmony of our hormonal cycles. This sounds so weird, but um, if you think of like the, like we're, 
programmed like this, the it's set up for like a man to thrive, right? Businesses are set up for a man to thrive. So they have a 24 hour hormonal cycle. They can show up as the same person every morning and do like the same things every day because they're programmed daily. We are programmed monthly. So if we are programmed monthly, how do we make that work to our advantage in our business? This is so interesting. So there's different stages. So the menstruation stage, we are the most cross-wired. So menstruation stage is about five days. We're the most cross-wired where the creativity pairs with the logic. We're most intuitive and that we're the most strategic. So if we bring this to our business, this is when our business strategy and our ideas want to come. And we kind of, they call it like the winter stage. Don't be trying to be like all bubbly and out there and like forcing it. You can authentically kind of huddle up and think through like the strategies of your business and how you want to up level and how, yeah, just you're the most intuitive. So you can connect with people on an intuitive level. Um, so the next one is called the follicular stage and it's kind of like the spring. Remember the last one was the winter. It's kind of the spring, but it's your highest energy. Um, it's the time when you want to initiate projects and it lasts about 10 days. So I've noticed what, like with the follicular stage, you can work out the hardest during these 10 days and have maximum results, but I've never really taken it to the business side in initiating projects. So this is when you want to like plan your events. Um, this is when you, when you want to start new things because starting new things are hard. Um, but you want to initiate all of that and like get the ball rolling because you have the most energy to like start it and see it through. Okay. The summer is the ovulation stage. It's when you're most verbal, um, you're most receptive. It's when you want to do the most networking or writing or connecting. So that's really interesting because we naturally want to connect with people. But like if you see most verbal, like this is when you want to make your videos. And this, like you can show up authentically and like partner with what your hormones are doing instead of trying to force it. And remember earlier we talked about like the 99%, you've got to have that last 1% to be able to show up. Like you've got to have that last 1%. Well, this is a, like the stages, working with the stages of your cycle is really cool because then you're not working against yourself. You're literally working with yourself and you're creating the most effective way to show up and you're basing it off the whole month. That's really cool. Okay. And then the fall is the luteal stage and it's when you're most detailed. It lasts about 10 days and that's when you want to like talk about or think through your business structuring. So. It resembles a little bit of the menstruation stage, but it lasts for that 10 days. And that's when you're the most detailed. So I think of like, um, yeah, the easy texting, if you want to do that or, um, connecting with people and being like the most detailed with helping them count macros or teaching them about whatever, like you're the most detailed on the little things of like cleanse coaching or whatever. So if you write that out with, um, kind of like as you have new ideas, I like that there's a solution to not having to do everything all the time. I literally can think of, oh, I have this new idea. I want to up level my business in this way. I'm going to do that in two weeks from now. I'm going to write that on the calendar. I'm not going to try to do everything that I know I need to do plus what I think I want to do. I'm going to put it on my calendar for when I have the most energy and I will be most effective to see that through. That makes, it's just so freeing to me because <laughs> there's a solution to the issue because I think all the time I want to do it all. And then if I'm trying to balance my plates and bring in something new, it just, I always drop one. I always drop a plate. So if you think of like being able to plug those to do's in, um, with your stages, it's pretty interesting how you can be the most effective. So just a little tidbit. And are there any questions at all? I find it so fascinating. So I'm so glad you shared. Um, you guys ask questions. I'm just going to keep it recording. We might as well, like, just maybe a question somebody else has. So why don't you unmute yourself if you have anything to share? A lot of events coming up. San Diego, Bay Area, uh, Vegas. We have a Super Saturday this weekend. 
Fun party Thursday at the pizza place. Try, try release comes out tomorrow, right? Yep. I'm so excited. I'm have so excited for you to share in the group. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, I have questions about that, like what we can be telling people about the try release protein. You can tell them um, anything from like the isogenic help on that. I don't know. But like Julie, I asked her specifically to go live because she's been using it um, and how she's using it, what she loves about it, what she's seen the difference in. Um, and there is collagen in the new recover. I think it's called recover. Really? Or it's called like the, like the after one. I don't think it's called recover. It's uh, not. No, but there's collagen in that, which I didn't know Brooke said. So, I mean, there's going to be a slew of podcasts. The issue I will say that Taylor was saying is Kathy wanted this distributed faster than like the images faster than like all of the things were done. So the knowledge may come a little later maybe, but, but Julie is a great example of actual, they do have a, I think a full 16 or few weeks study of people. So they have those results, but, um, Julie's results that she can share, obviously she hasn't used the other new product, but yeah. So you're going to share that tomorrow or you've already shared. I want her to share tomorrow live in Blessing in a Box, but I don't know if she will. Or Julie, honestly, if you want to share it live on your wall so then you can share it in multiple spots, it's fine. But um, I think it'd be highly, like, important if you did. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can do and, that. And if you guys don't follow, t follow Taylor yet or whatever on Instagram, she is obsessed with the try release. And she posts her, um, her like whatever recipes with it. She loves it in her cold brew and she just shakes it up in her cold brew. Um, it's her favorite. She does nitro before her workout and cold brew with her try release. Cool. I know. And, um, this, I won't share this like in the group, but I do like a half a scoop of try release and then birthday cake and then cold brew for like my shake every day. So, and it's been really yummy. It tastes really good. It's like a, it's like a frosty. But I like mine blended. That's why. I don't know how Julie likes it. <laughs> you know, I'm weird. I, okay. I'll just talk about it now since we're all here. And then I'll also post a video tomorrow. Okay. Um, I like having the try release the night before so that I can get the BCAs in my system before my 5 30 AM workout having the, cause if you can use the protein as a bedtime belly buster, right? Because it doesn't have carbs. So you can use the try release as your belly bedtime belly buster and it's prepping for your workout the next morning. I like to work out fasted. I don't like to have anything in my stomach for like four hours before. So you may be totally different with that and want to have the try release right before. Um, for me, I like having it the night before and I mix it in milk. Um, I've only had the chocolate kind. I haven't actually tried the vanilla, vanilla kind yet, but the chocolate kind, I just mix it with a spoon. I don't actually blend it or shake it. Um, <laughs> I know. I told, I told you I'm weird. I love the chunks. I love the clumps. They're so good with the milk. And then sometimes if I need the carbs, cause I like macro tracking and if I need the carbs, then I'll put like granola or some kind of like healthy oatmeal cereal, cereal in it. And I'll like eat it like it's a cereal with the yummy chocolate chunks. Oh my gosh. It's so good. So after a workout, Sometimes it just depends. I might have a whole scoop. I might have just half a scoop um, in the morning. Um, I can, I'll add it with my shake or I, I mean, most of the time I'm go, go, go during the day. So I don't have time to like do a whole bunch of different things, but I like adding it in um, with my shake or just stirring it in milk and just drinking it like that. Cause it's so good. <laughs> but um, I've noticed a difference in how much I can lift. So I do CrossFit right now. Um, and I, yeah, I used to be a swimmer. So it used to be about like the timing, how fast I could swim. Um, but I don't like getting in the cold pool anymore. <laughs> so, um, I like going to CrossFit and I can lift heavier. 
So that's been really fun. Um, I'm trying to figure out what my macros I, yeah, I, I just want to learn. I want to figure out what my macros need to be because I, I don't want it like CrossFit girls can get big. I don't want to get like big and bulky, but I want to be like super fit and like tight. You know what I mean? So, but I've learned that I can lift a lot heavier. So um, that's really fun because I'm very competitive. <laughs> Did you see what Rachel's saying? So she said, hmm, I work out fasted, but I cleanse at night. So I'm curious about this, if I should switch things up. Um, mm -hmm. You answer that, but what I would say is that I love, and I know you'll agree with me, I love that at Isogenics, all the scientists are all about switching it up and seeing all the different things. Like they're so fascinated with the research. So I would say switch it up, but go ahead, Julie. And I mean, you guys know I love biohacking. So just figuring out what works for your body and not being afraid to experiment. Um, try it for a couple weeks, give it long enough. Cause I know a lot of people will try like, I'll do this on these days and this on these days and that's fine, but you're not really going to know how your body responds if you just give it a couple days and then switch again. Um, so to actually have a testimony on it, I would give it at least two weeks to figure out. Um, and, and if you, if you want to do like the, um, one day a week cleansing, then, um, I would say, and you don't like doing a full 24 hour, what I've been trying lately is kind of dinner to dinner. So I've tried before lunch to lunch. Um, and I just would eat too much. <laughs> I like eating. Um, I would eat too much. I, I wouldn't, it wasn't the best results for me, but dinner to dinner, I've actually really liked. And then incorporating in the try release for my bedtime belly buster. Um, the rest of the nights, especially when I'm working out the next morning is really good. Um, you could just base it on your workouts. So, um, if you get up and work out three mornings a week, then have try release the night before, um, the mornings that you're not going to get up and work out, then have the cleanse the night before. That's what I would do. Um, I know I just told you not to do a little bit here and a little bit there, but if you're going to base it on your workouts, that's what you should do. And then stick with that routine for like two, three weeks to really see how your body responds to it. And then if anything needs to shift, it should be your macros. If like, if it's like 35, 35, 30, um, maybe you need to shift 5% from your fats and your carbs because you always, your protein needs to stay like the amount of grams in your body weight. So um, protein always is going to stay the same. It's your fats and your carbs that you can kind of switch up with the percentages and play with. If you're going to count your macros and do it that way, then you at least need to give it three weeks, if not four weeks, to figure out how your body's responding to consistently um, tracking your macros. But um, the biggest thing I like changing is intermittent fasting. So sometimes I do the two days, some diet, sometimes I do dinner to dinner, but um, if you want to have the cleanse on the nights that you don't get up and work out in the morning and then have the try release on the, on the, like your morning workout, even if you have like a 10 AM workout, you can have the try release the night before and work out still fasted. I don't, I mean, I don't eat anything until 11 on the days that I work out at 10 AM just cause I don't, I will, I'll get sick. <laughs> so, um, but if you're going to work out at like 11, then you need to eat breakfast. You shouldn't be working out fasted if you're going to have like an afternoon workout. But I, so I would, I would cut that off at like 10 a.m. And if, while we're on the topic of like, um, you know, performance and like workouts and whatever, you could also try if you're the type of person that wants just like something little in your stomach, um, try having simple sugars. So like an apple. Um, or a nectarine or something. Um, apples make me burp, <laughs> so I don't really have apples right before a workout, but a nectarine or a banana before you work out. So the simple sugars and the carbs right before you work out will really help um, sustainability and energy during that workout. You wouldn't recommend like, you know, one of the amped creatine things because of the sugars? The amped creatine? Well, just you like mean, the power oh, or the nitro. I mean. I am so hooked on nitro. I actually have never, ever tried power. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'd like it because it won't give you any of the jolt. I, I just know power to be more for dudes. I don't know if that's right, but 
I don't I just, why it just doesn't have the caffeine. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. I know nitro has way more creatine. Mm -hmm. And so power is just more, it's like more like weak. Yeah. So you can have the power and then a banana and. Um, oh, you do both. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You would do definitely do both. Okay. Kim says, did you have the grams equal to your body weight? Did you say have the grams equal to your body weight? Yeah. Yep. So you can do, um, if it fits your macros.com. So it's called I I F Y M.com. Um, that will help you kind of figure out how many calories you need each day. Um, that'll help you, um, yeah, know the percentages. I, I, I mess around with the percentages that they gave me. Um, I did get great results from the percentages that they gave me. I did that for like a full five months, six months. Um, but then after that, I kind of started switching it because I wanted to have more fat in my diet. I noticed I was like trying to find more carbs. Um, and so anyway, if you have more fat in your diet as women, it's really helpful for your hormones. And so I wanted to switch that up. So I've been trying that for a while. Um, yeah, IIFYM.com. And then I use my fitness pal. So you can go in and click on the calories and change my fitness pal to be um, the percentages that you want them to be. And they can match up with the numbers that IIFYM um, gives to you. But you don't have to buy anything. On IIFYM, you don't have to subscribe to anything. You can literally get the numbers on the first email and then unsubscribe to all the emails. Don't, don't buy anything else other than that. And then from there, you can tweak 5% at a time with your fats and your carbs after you try it for about three weeks. If it's not working or, you know, if you want to see faster results or whatever, you can switch those, those macros. I love it. So guys, be on the lookout for her live, comment, tag people. And I think like one of the main things that I would do, Julie, is like debunk the myth maybe of, you know, it's only for men or this is only who it's for. Um, that's really important. I did get a question about ner pregnant nursing moms. Since again, of course they can have tri release, but, um, the other AMP products. So we'll be posting articles as they come. No, you can't. Well, I mean, they wouldn't research that. Um, so yeah, look for that. We have, um, bone broth coming. I think it's at the end of this month too, or in October. Okay. So that's cool. And what else? Anything else? Oh, we have our book club. Start, sorry, that was really loud probably. Um, we have our book club Wednesday. So this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, John Maxwell. Invite your friends, people who are curious about um, network marketing in general, like why network marketing? They should get on the very first call if anything. So, and it's gonna be myself and Brooke, and Brooke is a former bar and restaurant owner. So um, she went through like bankruptcy stuff and she went through just horrible, like not being able to pay people for Christmas time and firing, like, I mean, just terrible things. So she's going to be telling her story about All right. Bless you, Christina. Okay, we'll see you at our next event, local event maybe, okay?